Time now for the big fat idea. Dan Blundell is with me. He's CEO of Nano One Materials Corp. Hey, Dan, thanks very much for finding time for us again. And uh, the, the it's really, really reason is straightforward. You work in an area, you know, of electric vehicle, lithium ion batteries. You, t- you told us about some of those opportunities and, you know, very, very clearly noted how China is mobilizing that effort, which is just fascinating. So I, one of the questions I had, though, that was begged out of that is where does Canada stand in this big race? Because this is a monster marketplace. Just losing Dan here for a second, so uh, had a little technical correction here, so we couldn't hear him. But maybe I could give his answer for him. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but while we do, I'll, I'll let you know that I've got uh, Greg Weldon coming up. Uh, he, the great stuff there. But wait till you hear my shocking stat this week. I think you're going to enjoy it. Hey, Dan, we lost your audio there just for a second. I was just saying, though, I wonder where Canada stands in this race about next-generation batteries. Yeah, well, uh, great to be on, back on the show, Mike. Um, Canada has a rich history in batteries, actually. Um, the first commercial lithium-ion battery was made right here in Maple Ridge by a company called Molly Energy, or they're called E1 Molly now, and they're still around. Uh, we have companies uh, like Fostec Lithium, Corvus Energy, Namaska. Uh, some of your listeners might know Electrovia. There's a company in Quebec called Blue Solutions. Uh, they're all Canadian success stories in the space. Well, one of the other successes that I'm interested in, you know more far better than I, but just r- reading about is, is, you know, universities like Waterloo, uh, you know, SFU out in the Vancouver area, UBC out in the Vancouver area, Montreal, though it looks like across the country, there's some really good work being done in this area. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I think our universities are lighting up some of the, the brightest minds in this space. Uh, there's kind of material science and chemistry, physics, engineering. A Dalhousie, uh, for instance, uh, has invented some of the most important patents in the space. They, uh, you, you may know that they've got a five-year R&D contract with Tesla as well. So mm-hmm. our universities are doing world-class work and and bringing in uh, some of the sort of the biggest battery and automotive companies to their uh, attention. But just quickly on this, because I want to ask you something about what you're doing there too. But uh, what about the government of Canada? Well. Government of Canada has some of the biggest clean tech funds in the world uh, through uh, NRC and SDTC, and then you've got big you've got the big provincial labs and and uh, uh, like at Hydro Quebec, and, and that's probably one of the biggest battery labs in the world. And then of course uh, the National Research Council has labs uh, all across the country, and they're all involved in lithium ion batteries. Hey, let me ask you about Nano One because uh, you know when you get the, that kind of government support, do you tap into that? Uh, for sure. Uh, IRAP and, and SCTC, uh, as I said, are, are some of the largest tech funds out there. And they're supporting Nano One with about $4.6 million so far. And this is all non-dilutive, non-repayable uh, monies and grants. And we're putting proposals together now for the next phase of our growth. And we hope to double that number. Um, uh, it's huge leverage, for, of course, for investors and for industrial partners. And uh, it's, it's certainly very beneficial to us as we uh, move into our next phase. I should have started with this, by the way, on that question. Uh, just remind everyone what nano. T- I mean, obviously, I know you're a tech company and you're you're developing the process in this this sphere. But maybe a little more specific on what Nano One does. Yes. So, so we're we're developing manufacturing processes for cathode mm-hmm. materials. So we assemble uh, uh, chemicals into the powders that store energy in a lithium ion battery. Our focus is is on lowering costs and boosting the performance of the, of the materials and the batteries. We've got uh, nine patents so far issued, uh, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, Canada, and the U.S., and we have another 30 in the pipe. Uh, we, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, I mean, I, can't, I mean, this is obviously a monster area that you know, people are driving toward. I mean, I can't help but think when you're, you're focusing on lowering costs and boosting performance, the demand is going to be huge for this doesn't matter where you are. I mean, that's what people in the manufacturing side, whether it's, you know, a battery used in a car or what have you, that's what they want, lower costs and better performance. It's, it's, it's everything about batteries. And, uh, and you know, we, we're, we're at a stage where we've, we've had, where we're piloting the, uh, the plant, uh, we're piloting the technology in, in a larger plant, a larger facility, and we're starting to demonstrate some of that higher production to, uh, to, to industry. So it's attracting sort of tier one companies in the automotive space. And, and we're at a stage right now where we're trying to sort of qualify that technology with them and that uh, and build the kind of partnerships we need uh, to move it forward. 
Well, as I say, it's an international demand. You're seeing it every, anywhere, but uh, everywhere. Dan, I want to thank you for taking the time. I know uh, interrupting the weekend, but this is a sphere, as you know, I'm, I'm very keen on and want to keep tabs on. And it's great to have you, CEO of Nano One Materials Corp., Dan Blundell. Dan, thank you.